A very good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News. It's the start of a brand new week. Lots to look forward to in the week ahead. And also today, let's take you through the headlines. Government defence decision on new army chief says selection of Lieutenant General B. Rawat is based purely on merit. Congress asked the centre to spell out compelling reasons for appointment superseding his seniors. Curfew imposed in Manipur's capital, Imphal, following violent protests against months-long economic blockade. Mobile and internet services are snapped to prevent spreading of rumours. Election Commission recommends amending laws to exempt only those political parties that win seats in polls from paying taxes. Also wants a ban on anonymous contributions above 2,000 rupees. At least 52 soldiers killed and over 80 wounded in a suicide attack near a military base in southern Yemeni port city of Aden. IS claims responsibility for the attack. And India scripts history. The men's junior hockey team wins the World Cup after 15 years, defeat Belgium 2-1 in the finals. Our top focus and what is perhaps going to be the controversial story of this week. The BJP came out in defense of the center's decision on the appointment of the new chief of army after opposition lashed at the center for overlooking two senior most army officers. Lieutenant General Bipin Rawat will take the reins from General Dalbir Singh, whose tenure is ending on the 31st of December. The appointment of new chief of army by the government is brewing into a political storm. Opposition parties on Sunday asked the centre to spell out compelling reasons for appointment of Lieutenant General Bipin Rawat as the new army chief superseding two senior commanders. Why the principle of seniority, which has held the field now for almost two decades, not respected by your government? Is it that these officers who have been superseded were unqualified in any manner? This is uh, very unfortunate. The appointments in army have uh, become controversial. The appointments in judiciary are already uh, controversial. The BJP, however, said Lieutenant General Rawat's elevation has been taken keeping in mind the current security scenario and was based purely on merit and condemned the Congress for politicizing the issue. The government of the day is entitled to take a view. Various issues are there before the government. It is not meant to be in looking at or playing politics with the armed forces. The top five the five men who were to do and all are competent people. लेकिन वर्तमान में जो परिस्थितियां हैं उनके अनुसार से सरकार ने जो फैसला लिया है इस तरह के फैसलों पर विपक्ष को कोई टीका टिप्पणी नहीं करनी चाहिए गवर्नमेंट अनाउंस्ड ऑन सैटरडे दैट लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल बिपिन रावत विल सक्सीड जनरल दलबीर सिंह सोहाग टू द पोस्ट ऑफ चीफ ऑफ आर्मी स्टाफ जनरल रावत विल सुपरसीड टू सीनियर मोस्ट ऑफिसर्स लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल प्रवीण बक्शी करेंटली कमांडिंग द ईस्टर्न आर्मी इन कोलकाता हु इज नेक्स्ट इन लाइन टू बी द आर्मी चीफ एंड लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल पीएम हारिस कमांडर ऑफ द सदर्न आर्मी इन पुणे this is only the second time when the senior most army officer has been ignored for a promotion. The only other time the senior most officer was not appointed army chief was in 1983 when Lieutenant General S.K. Sinha was overlooked for the post in favour of General A.S. Vaidya. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now the Director General of State Police in Jammu and Kashmir chaired a high-level security meeting on Sunday, a day after the militant attack in Pampur. K. Rajendra Kumar, DGP of Jammu and Kashmir Police, emphasized on better cooperation and coordination within the security establishment while emphasizing upon the army to strengthen the corridor protection. He directed officers present in the meeting to devise a plan for safe and secure movement of the people and the security forces along the national highway. He also emphasized on the CRPF to fine-tune road opening parties along the national highway. Earlier, IGP Kashmir Zone briefed about the security situation of South Kashmir and also highlighted the recent operations conducted against militants. Later, another high-level meeting was held between Rajendra Kumar and GOC 15 Corps, Lieutenant General J.S. J. Sandhu, which was attended by top officers of the Army, Police and Security Agencies. Three soldiers, remember, were killed in the Pampur attack. In more news, in an attempt to accelerate solutions to interstate river water disputes, the centre has decided to set up a single 
permanent tribunal to hear all such cases. The government has also proposed to float judicial benches by amending the Interstate Water Disputes Act of 1956 to look into disputes when required, which will cease to exist once the disputes are resolved. Decision to approve an amendment to the Act was taken at the Union Cabinet's meeting held earlier this week and is likely to be introduced in the next session of Parliament. The Election Commission has recommended that the government amend laws to allow exemption from tax only to the parties that win seats in elections. The poll body has also recommended to ban anonymous contributions of 2,000 rupees and above made to political parties. The political parties are exempted from under Section 13A of the Income Tax Act for income from house property, income by way of voluntary contributions, from capital gains and other sources. Only income under the head salaries and income from business or professions are chargeable to tax in the hands of political parties in India. So the Commission said, and I quote, there could be cases where political parties could be formed merely for availing of provisions of income tax exemption if the facility that at the expense of the public exchequer is provided to all political parties, unquote. Now, while there is no statutory prohibition on receipt of anonymous donations, there is an indirect partial ban on anonymous donations through the requirement of declaration of donations under the Rep representation of the People's Act. The government has said that political parties depositing all and 1,000 rupee notes in their accounts will be exempt from income tax, provided the donations taken are below 20,000 rupees per individual and properly documented. In yet another recommendation to check black money, the EC has also asked the law ministry to ensure that political parties are made to register details of donors for coupons of all amounts on the basis of a Supreme Court order of 1996. RBI Chief Urjit Patel will brief the Parliamentary Committee on Finance about the demonetization process and its impact on the 22nd of December. The briefing will begin at 11 a.m. at the Parliament and XC building on Thursday. Since the banning of the all 500,000 rupee notes on the 8th of November, the government has taken a host of measures like service tax ops and incentives for making digital payments ease out problems arising out of less currency being available in the market. The move has led to wiping out of almost 86% of the currency which was present in cash before the 8th of November in the form of 500,000 rupee notes. The RBI and government have been assuring the common people regularly that there is enough cash that has been pumped back into the system. The Reserve Bank of India last week said that 12.44 lakh crore rupees in demonetized notes have been collected at various banks. Also, banks have issued 4.61 lakh crore rupees to the public since the move through ATMs and bank counters. Imo News curfew has been imposed in Imphal following violence, uh, incidents of violence. Protests against the economic blockade by the United Naga Council since the 1st of November turned violent, forcing authorities to clamp restrictions. Mobile services have also been suspended to avert spreading of rumours. Curfew in Manipur's capital Imphal following violence. Indefinite curfew in Imphal East District till further orders. Similar restrictions imposed in Imphal West, however, only till dawn today. Curfew first coming into force on Sunday afternoon after locals resorted to violence and vandalized vehicles on the Imphal Ukrul Road. They were protesting against the ongoing economic blockade by the United Naga Council or the UNC on the national highways since November 1. If UNC uh, left, stop their uh, blockade, I think this uh, counter blockade uh, from uh, Imphal Valley will leave their uh, agitations. Government. So I think uh, our uh, concern, MLA, deputy, uh, deputy speaker is uh, here. They are responsible. I think they are trying to solve the problems. The prohibitory order, however, will be relaxed for essential services and accredited media persons. In neighboring Imphal West, curfew was imposed as a precautionary measure to ensure that there is no untoward incident. Mobile internet services have also been snapped till December 25 to prevent spread of rumors. We have been strained here for two nights and this situation looking after and coming back after so long feels, feels sad because we really felt we are coming back uh, for good but uh, over here it seems like the situation is never better than ever before and it is getting worse day by day. The UNC imposed an indefinite economic blockade on the two national highways that serve as a lifeline for the state since November 1. 
after the state government's announcement to form seven new districts. Tension also escalated after militants continued violent attacks on Manipur police and other state forces in the last few days. Three policemen have been killed and 14 injured last week. There were also bomb blasts in Imphal West District by Manipur Naga People's Front. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And for more on the developing situation there, we're joined by freelance journalist Sunzu BM from Imphal. In fact, uh, Sunzu, good morning. Uh, give us an idea of what's going on at the moment. The curfew, of course, still on. Uh, you know, what are the indications that you're getting as far as the mobile services are concerned? Would that, uh, uh, you know, that ban be lifted soon? Yes, uh, tension is still uh, high on uh, Imphal Cruel Road. Uh, in fact, uh, the police, the state force uh, ha had managed to uh, uh, escort uh, the stranded people from Ukul last night uh, without any obstruction, uh, but few of them are still stranded in Imphal. In fact, I'm traveling with uh, two of them, for, uh, two students from uh, Delhi, uh, and uh, I'm trying to reach them to Ukul and we have to take diversions because all these rocks, uh, all these uh, Imphal uh, Ukul Road, the, the protest, protesters have put up lot blocks which cannot be negotiated. So we have to take uh, routes uh, which we, can, we have to uh, reach uh, Ukul. And uh, in fact, uh, the curfew, uh, although it, uh, it is supposed to be on, uh, on, this, on the ground, uh, people are, uh, protest, protesters are on the streets. Everybody is on the street, but less uh, security force, so uh, the curfew is not effective, uh, in, at least in uh, Imphal East, where uh, yesterday the incident, the uh, ugly incident happened. Mm. And uh, uh, otherwise, uh, things seem to be normal, but uh, tension is still high on Imphal Ukul Road, and uh, uh, the people trying to reach uh, uh, Ukul still facing difficulties. Tracy? Absolutely, and uh, like the, the the way it sounds, uh, the tension could escalate further if, of course, the curfew is not in place in the full strength. Uh, Sunzu, this is also a time where, of course, cash is less all across the country, and now with digital transactions is what the government is looking at. But internet, mobile services banned. How difficult is it looking for Manipur? Uh, actually, the uh, the ban, uh, the suspension of uh, mobile data service uh, was announced uh, yesterday morning. But mm. uh, yesterday, uh, last uh, e uh, not yesterday, the day before evening, but yesterday throughout the day till evening around 5:30, the uh, the services were on because okay. the, the uh, mobile operators we are not uh, complying with the uh, government order but mm -hmm. uh, after 5:30 uh, everything was shut the mobile internet service was shut but uh, thankfully broadband service uh, were working yes. and we could manage to send news and other uh, uh, transaction on the uh, broadband internet otherwise everything is shut yeah. all uh, most of the atms are shut banks are not open because free zone Yep. So difficulty the sufferings of the people born in the valley in the hills uh, are very uh, uh, much uh, in the plight. All right. All right. We hope that the situation gets calmer. Uh, this is, of course, Christmas time. It's holiday time. And a lot of people, in fact, the ones who've settled in other parts of the country, they, this is the time where they come back home. And they're all, of course, relooking those plans. Thanks, Sunzu, for joining us for those details. We hope you have a safe journey. We'll keep an eye on developments there, but here's a look at what else will be making news in the day ahead. The NIA will file a charge sheet in the Pathan Ko terror attack in the court in Mohali. The charge sheet is likely to highlight the role of jaish e Mohammed terror group in spreading mayhem in India, naming Pakistan-based jaish e Mohammed chief Masood Azhar along with his brother Rof Azhar as the main accused. The chart sheet would also name two key terrorist handlers, Kashif Jan and Shahid Latif. The, uh, the chart sheet will also include evidence of linking the footprints of one of the terrorists obtained from Bamiya. A Hyderabad court will announce the quantum of sentence in the 2013 Dilsukh Nagar blast case today. NIA would also press for death sentence for five members of the Indian Mujahideen. On the 13th of December, the court had convicted Bhatkal and others under various sections of IPC, the Arms Act and UAPA. On the 21st of February 2013, two simultaneous bomb explosions took place at Dilsuk Nagar Market in Hyderabad, killing at least 18 and injuring over 130 people.
Bombay High Court will hear Nusli Wadia's plea on defamation case against Tata Sons today. The suit has been filed in the wake of the Tata Group's special notice seeking the removal of Wadia as an independent director of three group entities, Tata Steel, Tata Motors and Tata Chemicals. Retirement fund body EPFO is likely to take a decision on the rate of interest on PF deposits for 2016-17's fiscal year in its trustees meet in Bengaluru today. According to sources, interest rate could be at least 8.8%, which was fixed for the last fiscal. Besides, the EPFO will also consider a proposal to reduce the administrative charges of 0.65% of total wage on which contributions are payable from 0.85% at present. A quick break, more news follows in a bit. Stay with us. Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching Constitutionally Yours. There are certain issues which cannot be made justiceable. This time we implement the Uniform Civil Court as desired and as enshrined in the Constitution. This society is going to have a, a common civil court. So don't you think bringing gradual changes into personal laws would be more efficient? Law evolves as the society changes. Join us as we try to understand contemporary issues related to the Constitution. Watch Constitutionally Yours on Rajya Sabha Television. Raju Ki Bauli, located in Mehroli, is considered the most ornamental of Baulis in the national capital. It was built by Dalat Khan during the reign of Sekandar Lodhi in 1516. Raju refers to masons who used it. The entire structure is subterranean, so only the topmost story is visible as the visitor approaches. Walk towards its steps and each lower level slowly reveals itself. The top floor has a row of arched niches. There are three levels going down with 66 steps. The Bauli complex has a 12-pillar tomb and a mosque with plaster decoration on it. Carved brackets support the chajja below the parapet. There are rooms behind this arcade meant for shade and shelter for visitors. The Bauli combines Islamic architecture with hints of Hindu engravings and geometric designs. Tales that inspire Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back. Let's get you international news. And a suicide bomber has killed at least 52 soldiers and wounded over 84 in the southern Yemeni port city of Aden on Sunday. The attacker targeted a crowd of servicemen who had gathered to collect their salaries near a military base in the Kormaksar district. The bomber, who was dressed in police uniform, pretended to be disabled and infiltrated the crowd before detonating his explosive. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. It comes uh, eight days after a similar bombing at Al Solaban, claimed by the IS as well, and it killed 48 soldiers. Four gunmen who killed at least 10 people in the Jordanian city of Karak have been shot dead by the security forces. The gunmen had fled to a historic castle in the heart of the southern city of Karak after a shooting spree that left 10 people dead, including a tourist from Canada and at least four police officers. Four gunmen were also killed. Several tourists who were taken hostage were freed after a five-hour standoff between Jordan and special forces and the gunmen. Suicide belts and weapons have been seized at the hideout used by the terrorists, but it wasn't clear if the men belonged to any militant group. 
The incident marks the first major assault on civilian sites in recent years as Jordan struggles with radicalization at home. هذا القوة الأمنية المشتركة التي تعاملت منذ ظهر اليوم مع مجموعة إرهابية خارجة على القانون تحصنت داخل قلعة الكرك بعد إطلاق النار على عدد من رجال الأمن العام والمرة في محافظة الكرك أنهت عملياتها بعد أن تمكنت من القضاء على أربعة إرهابية The Pentagon has said that China has agreed to return the U.S. underwater drone that it seized in international waters earlier this week. The unmanned underwater vehicle was taken on Thursday. The Pentagon went public with this complaint after the action and said on, th on Saturday that it had secured a deal to get the drone back. Details were not immediately available on when or how the drone may be returned. Meanwhile, Beijing has said that Washington has been hyping up the incident. President-elect Donald Trump weighed in on the incident, calling China's action unprecedented. Earlier, in fact, in the day, he also tweeted that we should tell China that we don't want the drone they stole back. Let them keep it. And now to Syria, where evacuations on Monday resumed from East Aleppo with buses and ambulances leaving rebel areas of the Syrian city. As many as 500 people were brought to Al Rashidin, where they were given food rations and winter clothes before being placed in temporary camps. A deal to free East Aleppo's remaining civilians was stalled again on Sunday, though, after six buses sent to evacuate people out of the government control areas besieged by rebels were stopped and set ablaze. The UN Security Council is said to have agreed to a compromise to allow UN monitoring of the operation. Russia had earlier rejected a French drafted plan to send UN officials to East Aleppo, calling it a disaster. Given our experience with so many Russian vetoes up to this point, you can't have confidence, but I will say that we worked very constructively uh, together uh, with the representative of the Russian Federation on the text. And so I can't speak for how his system works, um, but we expect to vote unanimously for this text tomorrow at 9 a.m. Cinemas in Pakistan will resume screening Indian movies from today. Film exhibitors and cinema owners in Pakistan had suspended the screening of Indian films following the Indo-Pak tensions due to the Uri terror attack. The Pakistani film industry has reportedly been hit by the two-month-long ban, with newly built and upgraded cineplexes depending on Indian films for business. They said that they had only suspended the screening of Indian films and had not completely banned them. Some cinema owners are, however, apprehensive of backlash from religious parties and have asked for protection if required. All right, sports now in India on Sunday created history as they claimed the Junior Hockey World Cup title after a gap of 15 long years with a clinical 2-1 victory against Belgium in the final played in Lucknow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi as well congratulated the men's junior hockey team for winning the World Cup, saying that it augurs well for the future of Indian hockey, adding that the victory will make the sport even more popular among the youngsters. Indian men's junior hockey team scripted history on Sunday as they lifted the Junior Hockey World Cup after a gap of 15 years with a clinical 2-1 victory against Belgium in the final. It was also the first time that a host nation won the tournament since its inception. The hosts scored two beautifully crafted field goals in the first half of the match. Gurjan Singh scored the scoreline in the eighth minute of the game. The Indians kept up the pressure and doubled their lead in the 22nd minute, top of the circle, after he was fed by a measured pass from Neil Kanta. However, Belgium could only manage a late consolation goal through a penalty corner conversion in the 70th minute. Earlier, India had won the trophy in 2001 in Hobart, in Australia. Congratulatory messages poured in from across the nation following the win. Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to Twitter to wish the team. Sports Minister Vijay Goel also hailed the team for a brilliant performance. 
कि हमारी हॉकी जूनियर टीम जो है वर्ल्ड चैम्पियंस बनी है हॉकी के अंदर हम लगातार बढ़ रहे हैं और हमारी स्पोर्ट्स मिनिस्ट्री चाहती हुई अब यही है कि सभी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन को ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा फैसिलिटीज़ मिले ताकि वो ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा वर्ल्ड टूर्नामेंट्स के अंदर पदक जीत के आएँ तो मैं उनको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ सेवाकी में देश का गौरव बढ़ाया और देश के गौरव के साथ साथ वो सम्मान बढ़ाया जो हॉकी को मिलना चाहिए था खेल के थ्रू मेडल के थ्रू और जूनियर वर्ल्ड कप के खिलाड़ियों ने आज देश को तोहफा दिया है Earlier in the day, six-time champions and title holders Germany had to content themselves with a bronze medal after outclassing Australia 3-0 in the third-fourth place playoff match. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in cricket, India will resume their first innings at the overnight score of 3.91 for four on the fourth day of the Chennai Cricket Test today, replying to England's first innings score of 4.77. India dominated the first and third sessions of day three of the final test on Sunday. Opener Lokesh Rahul struck a stunning century in excellent batting conditions and was out at just one run less to the double ton caught by Butler and bowled by Adil Rashid. India still trailed by 86 runs. And finally, we wrap up this bulletin on a sweet note. Scores of people attended the 37th annual cake exhibition in Bangalore, where giant-sized cakes modelled on prominent landmarks were put on display. We're leaving you with these images. Have a good day.